A civil suit, the first of its kind to be filed in the Supreme Court, is being litigated before Justice Courtney Abel. The claim against the Belize Central Prison and its management organization is being brought by former inmate Aurel Leslie. He is suing the government of Belize, as well as the Colby Foundation, for refusal of his constitutional rights while on remand, along with two others, for the murder of BDF soldier James Norales. Leslie has beaten that case twice, but he is not letting go of the alleged ill treatment he received at the hands of the prison staff that easily. His claim really is one that he, his constitutional rights were being denied. Um, this claim arose from the time or Leslie was an inmate at the Belize Central Prison. Um, he had violated prison rules and in prison it is, uh, we, he faces what you call a tribunal and he is not charged criminally for those offenses or those infractions if you would want to call it that. He's charged for offenses against prison discipline. Um, remember I keep saying that prisons are all about order and discipline. So why would an internal matter, which was dealt with as such, be tried in open court? Isn't the Prison Act autonomous of the justice system? It is, um, it is um, autonomous indeed. Um, however, there's a thing called constitutional um, rights and there's certainly the constitutional beliefs, which as far as I understand it, um, it, it pretty much supersedes or trumps just about every other law. If there's any law that is inconsistent with that, um, then it doesn't, it's null and void according to what I, my, my, I hear. No? Um, and pretty much what he's filing is a constitutional motion. There's two things that he's saying. He's saying that he was denied his constitutional right as it relates to the charges that he was charged for under the prison rules. Now, I'm not too worried about that charge because like I said, he didn't commit, we, we didn't charge him criminally for the offenses. Um, we charged him for offenses against prison discipline, which is far different than a criminal of, uh, charge. In fact, the formal accusation made against Leslie was for a capital offense that was allegedly committed by a trio of men, including himself, on the night of November 23, 2012. He was subsequently taken into custody before being arraigned and placed on pretrial detention. While on remand, Leslie, along with two other inmates, was charged with drug trafficking when a quantity of marijuana was found in their possession. It was one of three incidents following an indictment for murder where he would run afoul of the law. One of the things I want to emphasize at this point in time is that we must all understand that the prison is the last sanction available to the courts to manage people, those persons who have failed alternative punishments. And um, it literally means that when you come to prison, if you carry on with your same behavior, then you should be disciplined. Um, we, we, can't, we cannot mince with that. We have to either try and reform you one way or the other, either through programs or through disciplines. And in so doing, Leslie maintains that his human rights were violated behind bars. On the other hand, he's charging the prisoner, he's alleged, alleging that the prison treated him inhumanely. And that is what he really has a serious burden to try and prove. And that is what I think is really the only thing that, I'm, that, that I believe he will have to really, really prove. I hate to use the analogy <clears throat> of the animal farm and all animals being equal or not equal. But in this particular scenario, is he saying that he was denied certain fundamental treatment while behind bars? That would have put him in a position separate from other inmates there. That is pretty much what he's saying. Um, you know, he, he's pretty much um, alleging that maybe we may have been singling him out. Um, but like I say, anybody can make an allegation. It is for them to prove that is really the issue. To prove such a case, Leslie's legal representative, Arjo Matura, is calling on a pair of witnesses to take the stand and testify on his behalf. The procedures to be able to do so considering that both witnesses have been condemned, were not followed prior to today's session. What really happened, um, they just went through pretty much some affidavits that he had, um, had signed off on with respect to all the different pointers and the different accusations that he's bringing against the prison. Um, and pretty much what he did to the court this morning is um, they said that there were two witnesses that they want to bring from the prison to sort of, you know, I, I guess listen to what they have to say. Um, I don't know that 
I, I don't know what they're going to listen to or what they're going to say tomorrow, but I know for sure it's not going to be um, taken into evidence, at least not at, as, as of that point, that as, as far as I'm concerned. It's just, I guess, a matter of them getting the attorney, in this instance, pretty much getting some kind of statement from them, I guess, to sort of either corroborate or, I guess, um, deflect what was actually alleged against the prison. Those persons, one of whom is serving a life sentence, would require a removal order from the Supreme Court for them to leave the facility. Their argument, says Murillo, is neither here nor there, considering their convictions. The prisoners that they want to bring out are both convicted prisoners. And um, attorneys need to know that if you're going to, I mean, if a prisoner is convicted, there's really no case, uh, no case to fight for that prisoner anymore, unless you're appealing the case. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, these prisoners have been convicted quite a while ago. That 21 days appeal time has already elapsed. As a matter of fact, one of them is doing a life sentence. You know, so um, Ms. Audrey Maturan knows that, um, or she should know, that if you need to get a prisoner out of the prison, other than the normal removal for the purpose of attending a hearing, you, you need to get a special order from the judge. Those inmates who are yet to be identified are expected to go before the court during the course of the proceedings. The hearing resumes on Wednesday morning. Reporting for News 5, I am Isana Kayatano.